Hey Interwebs, my name is Mort, and today we are taking a look at a software called Aceprite, and this is a basic introduction on how to use it. Let's get into the stuff. Let's talk about the tools that you're going to be using out through your pixel adventure. First off, you can find all the main tools over here to the right, and the first one we'll be looking at is the pencil tool. You can get it by clicking over here, or you can type B on your keyboard to get the short key. So what is the pencil tool? Well, it's your basic drawing tool. It's what you'll be using for the most part, and as you can see here, when I left click, I just draw and right click erases and if it doesn't erase when you right click go down here and make sure that your background color is set as mask beside that you can also change the size up here and you could do that by either typing in the number of the size you want or you can just scroll with your mouse wheel and you can see as I scroll here the number goes up and down on the left side of the size you can see a brush type and here you can change the shape of your brush so you can make it into a square or you can make it into a line you can also change the angle if you're using the square or the line here. Now here's something that I really like about this software and that is the function called pixel perfect. What it basically does is that when you turn it on and you start drawing, it gets rid of all the doubles. It might still make a jacket line, but it's going to be a lot easier and more convenient for you to draw quickly. The last option I want to cover up here is the symmetry option. And if this doesn't show for you, just go in here to the view section and make sure that you have checked symmetry option and then it should appear right up here. And what it basically does is that it spawns this blue line and wherever you place this blue line and you start drawing, it will make it symmetrically on the other side. And you can now, of course draw on each side, it doesn't really matter which side you draw on. You can do this both horizontally or vertical if you want to. But just to finish up, the brush tool is just your main drawing tool really. And all the options up here will more or less be the same for all the tools. One last thing I want to talk about is the ink option up here. I'm only going to be talking about the alpha and the simple ink. So when I select alpha here, you can see I get another option called opacity. And it's basically how translucent your pen is going to be. So you can see if I start drawing more on top of each other, it's more transparent. I, for the most part, just keep mine on alpha because I can just turn this all the way up to the top and I get a completely consistent full color. And that is basically the pen tool. Let's move on to the next tool and that is the line tool. You can get the line tool by going over here to the right and select it or you can use the short key L. So what is the line tool? Well, it's a tool that makes lines. So you can see when I press down on my left mouse key here and start dragging, I can just make a line. I'm sure you could just draw a line, but it's much more convenient being able to actually see your line. So if I hold down shift while I make a line, you can see how it's kind of snapping to a more perfect angle. And if I hold down control while I draw, you can see how the line is going from the center, rather going to where I pointed it. So sometimes you might have a line in the center of something and it's much easier to just place it there straight away and then try and drag it out. And you can also combine control and shift here to drag it out from the center and make a straight angle line. All right, next up comes the second line option is the curve line. And you can give that by pressing shift L or go over here and select it. So what is the curve line? Well, basically when you draw your line like before, after you release the mouse key for the first time, you can now drag it up and down and make a more even curve line. And you can actually curve it twice. So I can place it over here and then I can curve the line once more. And that is a way to make a smooth curved line in a sprite. All right, let's talk about the next tool and that is the shape tool. So what is the shape tool? Well, if we go over here to the right and select it, you can see I get rectangles and I get eclipses. Wow, it took me a while. I expected it to say circle. Anyway, so let's just start out by taking the rectangle tool. You can also get that by pressing U on your keyboard. And you can see if I keep pressing U, you can see it changes over here to the right from a full to an empty. So let's try and make an empty one here first and then press U and make a full one. And you can see as I drag it, even though the icon is full, it's still empty as I drag it. But when I release it, it will be full. What it basically does is make a rectangle of your main color and fill it up. Though if you hold down shift and U, you can now see they changes from circles or eclipses as an empty or a full one. And like before, when we make one and release it and then shift U again, you can see it changes to a full or an empty one. Like with the line tool, you can also hold down shift to make it even both axes. So if I hold down shift, it has the same length. 
And as well with the line tool, if you hold down control, you can then make it come out from the center of where you're placing it. And yes, you can combine them too with the rectangle and eclipse tool. And that is basically your shape tool. And next up we have the contour. You can get that by pressing D. Or you can go over here to the right and select it. So what is it? Well, the first contour tool is just like a normal sort of drawing tool when you see it at first. But then when you release it, it fills everything up that you have drawn. And like with the shape tool, we can also select a second option, which is the polygon tool. You can get that by pressing switch D. And what it is, is basically like a mix of your line tool and your contour tool. So you can see here when I draw and keep releasing and pressing, I kind of make like a, a straight line between some points and it fills it up. It's a very unique tool and I definitely recommend you just playing around with it a little. You can really make some funky stuff with it. All right, so let's look over everything. We had the pen tool, which is our normal drawing tool. We had the line tool, which make us able to make lines. We have the shape tool that makes us able to make shapes. And then we have the contour tool that makes us able to make some filled out shapes quite quickly. All right, next up we got, yeah, the mouse. So there's a little thing I wanna talk about with the mouse. Of course, the left and right mouse key is usually your drawing or erasing one, but there's also the middle mouse, which you can use to drag around your canvas. You can also drag around your canvas by holding down the spacebar and left click around. If you are holding down spacebar, you can also go to 100% center your picture or fit it to the screen. You can also zoom in and out with your mouse wheel by scrolling up and down. And yeah, that is basically a few things about the mouse that you might want to know. All right, and next up we have the eraser. Well, it's what it says it is. Let me just start out by drawing something here. And you can see when I press E or click over here to the right, you get the eraser tool. And it's basically like your brush, just that it erases things. <laughs> There's not really a whole lot to say about it. Um, so yeah, you can get the eraser by pressing E and you can get the brush by pressing B and then you can just erase and draw, erase and draw, erase and draw. Yeah, you can do that for hours. That's um, that's pixel art for you. Next up, we have the eyedropper tool. There's two ways to get it. Most people would probably go over here and click and be like, yo, I sampled that color. Now let's get my pen again and draw. But it's much, much faster to just hold down Alt. And while you're holding down Alt, you can see my mouse changes into the eyedropper. And then when I click on something and release the Alt, it changes it back to the tool that I was just using. So I can now super quickly go between some colors that I want to sample and, and keep using. Thing. All right, next up we got the paint bucket. You can get it by clicking over here to the right or you can press G to get it. So it's basically like a paint bucket in, in any other tool. So let me just grab a color over here, green, and you can see when I press somewhere, it fills that color out with my selective color. And that is cool and all, but there's something a lot of people oversee with the paint bucket. And that is the option up here called continuous. So if I uncheck this, go back to my original circles and you can see now when I press my color into the blue here, it will do it on every single color on my layer. And that is really cool. But let's say I only want to color the blue bits on this circle green. What I would do is take my selection tool, which I'm actually going to be covering next and just make sure that I've selected this. And now when I use my paint bucket tool in here, it only colors within my selection. That is really neat if you want to color a lot of colors to one same color. Let's say that the blue here, I rather want that to be a darker blue and I wanted the red to be a darker red. That was a quick way for me to do it. But in fact, on the middle object, I want it to be just the normal blue. So I would select it and I would now just color it in like that. And that is the paint buggy tool for you. But next up, let's talk about the selection tool. So I brought in my dear old friend Test Cooper Trooper and we are going to be using some selection magic on this guy. So you have two selection tools. We have the magic wand and then we have a bunch of different selection up here. But for now, let's just go about the normal selection tool. So what it is, it's when you press M, you get your selection tool and you can start dragging. And then this square with some dotted lines appear. And when you now drag this, you can move your selection around or like we did with the paint bucket we could fill out a certain area within here or if you take your brush tool i can actually do so i only draw within my selection 
That can be quite useful in many situations. Uh, one thing that I really like is the magic wand, which is also part of the selection tool. And you can get it up here as well, or press W. And when you use that and click on a color or somewhere, let's click uh, outside of the Koopa Trooper here, you can see it select everything outside of my Koopa Trooper here. And now if I were to draw something behind the Koopa Trooper here, instead of having to make a separate layer, if it was just something simple, I can just select everything around him or draw. Or if I wanted to draw something within his eyes, I could do that. It can be really useful. I use the magic wand and selection tool so much. I can't really describe how and what I use it for, but it just happens so many times within my workflow for so many different reasons. One last thing with the magic wand here is that you can turn continuous, I can never pronounce it, on and off. And it basically like the paint bucket. So let's say I want to select all the yellow colors here because I've turned this off. It will now select everything on the layer with that color. And if I want to select multiple things, I can hold down shift and it will select multiple objects and keep the selection from the past one I made. So here I easily selected everything that had the yellow tone on the Kuba Trooper. And if you want to deselect something, just hold down control D or you can right click on your selection and you will start deselecting things. Also, give a big hand for our dear friend Koopa Trooper for being a selection test object here. So let's just go over everything. So we had the erase that we used to erase things with. We had the eyedropper that we could use to quickly select some colors. The paint bucket tool to quickly fill out a color that we want to change. Or the selection tool that we can use to select objects with and track them around. And you can see those tools can really make a mess. So let's move on. All right, now I want to make a quick speed paint so you can see how I only use these tools that appears atop here right now. And yeah, let's just go at it. So I'll see you guys in just a second. Alright, and here we go, a cute little cat. I had absolutely no idea what to draw, so I just made something completely random. But here is a little bit of an insight on how I only use these tools above to do most of my workflow. Anyhow, let's move on, and next up I want to talk about layers. When you open up a sprite for the first time, you can't see the layers anywhere. And this was actually where I was the most confused the first time I opened an a sprite. So you can get them by pressing tap, and that's where the layers is, they're down here below. And each time you press tap, you can hide and show your layers. So it might look a little confusing, but this is where, like I was talking about in the beginning, where the software reminds me a lot like Flash, because it doesn't have layers like Photoshop or many other software, it has a timeline. For me, this is a huge plus. For some, it might be a turn off. But if you're just going to draw a single frame, don't worry about all these numbers. Because the layers are this row down here. And this is all the different keyframes. So you can see here, if I make a new document and make it 128 by 128, you can see I only have one layer and one frame. And each time I get a new layer, it looks like this. So if you're not going to animate, don't worry too much about all the frames here. That is something we'll cover in the future in an animation video. All right, let's go back here. So let's dig a little deeper into the layers. So the first thing we want to check out about layers is the layer properties. You can do that by double click on a layer, then this window will appear. There you can name your layer. So this layer in my case is named art. That's why it says art down here. Next up is the mode. And this is something that can be an entire video by its own. So I'll not cover this for now, but just make sure it's always set as normal. And then last off, we have the opacity. And this is how transparent your layer is. So you can see here, if I turn it up and down, the opacity goes down as well. Next up is something a lot of people is probably curious about. And that is how to create a new layer. And you can do that by pressing Shift N. And you can see when I do that, a new layer appears down here and again I can double click on it to change the name so I'll name this one test layer. You can also remove that by right clicking down here and then press remove. You can also duplicate a layer by right clicking again and then duplicate or you can merge it down. That basically means that you are merging the two layers together and that is basically what you need to know here in the beginning about layers. Next up let's talk about your 
color tools and the color section over here to the left. All right, so this one I want to go through a little quicker because some of it is a little useless for new people, but it might be nice to know. So the first one is your palette editor and you can get that by selecting our color over here and then press F4 or you can use the button up here. Then you will basically get up all the information about this color and if you want to change one of your colors in your color palette, you can then change it up here and you can see as I slide this around it changes as well. And you can change this between HBS or RPG or whatever works for you. The next one is sorting palette and it's uh, a little arrow up here where you can sort all your colors in your palette. So if I want to sort them by luminance, you can see change it to the one that's the most illuminated or brightness or you can change it to saturation. It's going to sort out your colors in very different ways. Um, yeah, so that's a neat little thing. You can also make a gradient and by using that feature, I'm going to scale this up a little bit and then I'll make a random color down here. Now. I've used the palette editor to make a yellow down here. So if I hold my left mouse key here and drag all the way down to the yellow, you can see I've selected all these colors and then I go in and use the gradient. It's then gonna gradient all the colors in between. All right, moving on. Next up, we have the presets. This is something I think is such a cool feature, especially for people who's not very good at picking color themselves and they just really wanna dig into the artsy partsy of it. So then you can go in and use presets and all these presets has been made by other people and a sprite had implemented it into the software of course with their uh, permission of course and if you found a palette that you really like for the most part you can even hover over here and there's a little link to the to the artist's website if you want to check more out about them. But yeah, there's a bunch of great palettes in here that you can check out and use and play around with. It even has palettes such as the old NES, it has Game Boy palettes, it has a bunch of community created palette, the Pico 8 palette, which I know a lot of people like. It's a good place to have some fun with some uh, pre-made colors. And the last section here is the options section. For some reason you can get the palette editor here as well. I mean, it's cool, <laughs> but you have an entire button for it by itself. Beside that, you can also change the size of how big the palette is going to appear on your sidebar. Another neat thing is the four sections here. So for some people, they might not have this setup that I have down here with the color. So you can change it to different setups depending on what rocks your boat. I personally just use the tint shaded tone one. That is the one I'm most used to sort of shade with. Besides that, you can also save a palette if you create your own palette and you can load it in if you ever go in to open a sprite on a different computer or something like that. And if you have a palette that you really like and want to be the main palette, every time you create a new document, you can save it as default palette. So every time you create a new document, that is the palette that is going to be loaded. And the last section down here, create palette from current sprite. This is a really neat feature if you load in a screenshot or if you are part of some of my challenges here on the channel where we sometimes have to use a certain palette, you can then load this palette into 8 sprite and then create a palette from current sprite and it will then automatically load all the colors together and create a palette out of it. And that is the four main section of the color tools in a sprite. And guys, this is where we come to an end of the video. I hope you found this video informative and it helped you get into the basics of a sprite. I look forward to see what you guys create with the software. And if you want to share anything with me, be sure to hit me up on Twitter. I'd love to see what you guys create. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, make sure to give the video a like. And if you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe. You can also help me help you by supporting me on Patreon. And feel free to check some of the other videos out here on the site. See ya! Blah, blah, blah.